What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Arkansas coming off a disappointing loss. I mean, you say disappointing, but it was encouraging at the same time. I mean, there was really two options for Arkansas in this one. They could either lay down after the loss to San Jose State, not show up, or show some fight and guts and determination like they did and they chose to do and show up and play this game. There was really no in-between. There was no, like, Arkansas just, you know, kind of losing by 14 points or something like that. It was either going to be a fight to the end like it was or they were just going to get blown out 55-10. to 10. And so it's encouraging to see them come out and fight. We're going to talk about more of the game, and Pete Rulia – Pete Rulia is also going to join us uh, from Arlington to break it down. Your questions and more on Hog Sports Live. Arkansas is going to win an SEC game this year, guys. It's going to happen. Okay, this was a good chance for it to happen, but it just didn't come together for them. Now, I'll say this. There were a few – I'm not putting this on the referees because Arkansas had their opportunities to win, but there were a few plays here, man, that would have would have really helped if the refs would have seen it. And I think you all know what I'm talking about, the no-call pass interference call. Um, I mean, that took you back to the NFC playoffs with New Orleans Saints and uh, the Rams. I mean, 208 left to go in the game. The final drive, Miles Jones uses both hands to take Tyson Morris to the ground right in front of the side judge. He couldn't have been in a better spot to make that call, but didn't even flinch. I mean, come on, man. I mean, Arkansas made up for it, but, man, this is the last drive of the game. You know, there's other calls in the game. I don't want to go down and break down every single missed call or thing that, you know, Razorback fans would be furious about. Again, I'm not putting this on the refs because Arkansas had their opportunities, but they certainly didn't help them. <laughs> I mean, they didn't help them. You know, with uh, 12.31 left uh, on uh, – it was a third and four, and Bumper Pool hooked his man over the middle. It was a pass interference call. Should have been called, but you almost felt like Arkansas was going to get away with one. And it just seems like they never get away with anything. Does I mean, it feels like Arkansas cannot buy a holding call against a, against a team. It feels like they can't buy a holding call. And, th- and that happened some in this game too. But you felt like they were just going to get away with one. And then four seconds later, you know, you get one flying in from the from the referee way back in the, the back judge, way back in the back. And, uh, you know, Bumper's already walking to the sideline celebrating, thinking, the, thinking that they've uh, stopped him. You know, and, and they should, it should have been a flag, but you just felt like maybe they would get away with one there. So you had, you had the, uh, the main things I'm talking about, though, are that no call and that pass play. And then with 52 seconds left, the def- so they've made a big emphasis about punishing quarterbacks, driving them into the ground. And you had the Texas A&M defensive tackle literally suplexed Ben Hicks up over his head <laughs> and drove him into the ground. That is a penalty. Whether we like it or not with where football is going with the treatment of quarterbacks and stuff, that is a penalty that they are – I mean, they are emphasizing that as a big-time deal for safety, player safety, safety of the quarterback. Maybe they're just emphasizing it when it suits them, but that's a penalty. And it put Arkansas on a second and 17 on the final drive that they couldn't overcome at the end of the game. I mean, those are two huge, huge no-calls for Arkansas, against Arkansas. But I don't want to make it all about penalties because it's not. Like I said, it didn't cost them the game, but uh, certainly didn't help them any in that one. Um, If you're a Razorback fan, you're probably really confused right now. Or as someone tweeted at me, I I wish I could remember because he made a good point. If you've been following Razorback football for the last 30 years, you shouldn't be confused at all. But it does go to show you how important in the college game emotion and mental attitude is because of the team that showed up Today, for this Texas A&M game, if that team showed up last week against San Jose State, they would have absolutely clobbered them. They would have hammered them into the ground if that team showed up last weekend. It just shows you they they weren't ready to play. And at the same time, while you're encouraged and you feel good about this game, you should also be even a little more upset because you know that they have the potential to do it. This game is always close. Last six years, I guess, it's been decided by seven or fewer points now. This is decided by six, except for the one game. Um, 
and that was the one where Arkansas had that like 19 play drive that lasted nine minutes and 45 seconds and then couldn't punch it in in the end zone to go up. And then uh, the next thing you know, A&M hits that big 92 yard pass play and the game's blown open. It's a 31 or 21 point loss. But aside from that, um, aside from that, this game has always been close in this series. But I mean, it is amazing to me that Arkansas can't get a call in Jerry Jones's house. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Uh, but a 23 and a half point underdog in this one, you got to be proud of the way they played. And, and you know, losing Starkle was big. Uh, he has a, a left arm contusion, looks like somewhere around here in his, in his elbow. Um, but you have to be, able, you have to feel good about the way Ben Hicks came in, showed some guts, absolutely. Um, now Nick Starkle is still the quarterback for this team. He's still the starter, still gives you the best chance to win for his ability to drive the ball down the field. But you got to feel good if there's a situation like there was last week when Starkle's off his game, throwing a bunch of interceptions, maybe Ben Hicks would, would have been the right call there. Hicks certainly showed well. So you have to be proud of that. If you're a Razorback fan, you do have a quarterback who can get in there and help you if uh, if Starkle goes down or if he needs to come out for some reason just having an off day. So good on Ben Hicks. Glad to see him uh, get an opportunity and, and do well. And almost, they almost did enough. But uh, unfortunately, it's been all too familiar for Arkansas in this series and and just period, you know, just not coming up there at the end. So good on Ben Hicks. Nick Starkle should be back. And, you know, when we're talking about the Kentucky game, you get a bye week next week. It's a good time for a bye, okay? Obviously, Arkansas should have – they should have three wins, you know, uh, on their on their sched, on their their whatever you want to call it, docket. I, I don't know. But they should have three wins. And um, – yeah, maybe the Texas A&M one shouldn't be one that the San Jose State out. I absolutely should. So they can get healthy. They get Trey Knox back from his hip injury that's bothering him since Ole Miss. Um, get Devion Warren back from concussion protocol. Get Chase Hayden back from concussion protocol. Get Nick Starkle back from his arm. Um, all of those things will go a long way. And then other bumps and bruises. You know, Colton Jackson's been dealing with a, a sore foot that's plagued him since fall camp. Um, you know, some things like that, you, you can get some players back, so that, that'll help. But Arkansas has a chance to win an SEC game, and the best chance is this Kentucky game. This is the game that I predicted them to win in the preseason. I had them losing all the games except for, um, well, not obviously San Jose State, but um, I was right on all my preseason predictions so far up to this point. Uh, but Kentucky, that thing's shaping up. I mean, they, they don't have their quarterback. Um, they've lost a lot off last year. They play here in just a little bit at 6.30. I'm going to watch that game for sure. And uh, But they get a bye week also. So they get a bye week chance to regroup uh, on some things. But that is an opportunity for Arkansas to get that that SEC game uh, finally under Morris. And I think that I think that they had a good shot to do it. I think I might pick them to do it. So um, I'm going to bring in Pete Rulier here in a minute, but I also want uh, to get you, you guys involved in it with your questions and stuff. Um, Let's see here. Cody Lambert says the PI on Brown was Bush League. And I think you're probably right. I think that's probably – I mean, that was pretty nitpicky. I mean, I agree with that. Uh, Brown did not protest very much, which made me kind of think that maybe he was a little more guilty. But um, it was it was pretty nitpicky. Uh, what about that ref blocking the receiver from catching the pass? Yeah, that was a third down. That was another tough one from the referees right over the middle of the field on third down, and uh, the referee screens out the wide receiver. That was that was a tough one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get to, to Pete Roulier. He is in Arlington, so we want to get a man-on-the-scene opinion on what he thinks of the game. Hey, Trey, can you hear me all right? We got you, Pete. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right, man. How about yourself? Doing good. Well, first, I, I just kind of want to get your overall impressions of the game. What did you think of how everything played out? Yeah, another tough loss against A&M. And it felt like I was down on the field for the last three minutes, that last Arkansas drive. And mm. it felt like fans really felt that uh, this could be the year. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess it feels that way every year, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, um, I've been, but I've the been crowd was there, absolutely Pete. electric. Um, it might not have been the attendance that – it was 2012, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it was 51,000. But Arkansas fans, man, that whole game. I mean, I'm looking at them on a probably the biggest TV screen in the whole entire world, right? Mm -hmm. And you could just see it in their eyes. Like, they were surprised. They, a lot of them weren't expecting Arkansas to come out and perform the way they did. And 
actually put some effort into it and, and to their credit they absolutely did uh but that, then again uh couldn't get it done yeah. uh, in the final final second so Pete where were you standing where were you standing down there because man I was right in the corner the left corner of Texas mm. A&M's end zone I can't tell so, you how many times Pete that me and David Basil have been standing <laughs> under the goalpost. I was right next to Baz too. Yeah. Well, you got to get away from Basil. I think that's part of it. And that, I didn't go this year, and and kind of I've been every year, uh, and I didn't go this year just because I I can't count how many times me and Basil have been standing under that goalpost and watching them lose in overtime in that same end zone every single time. So I was wondering if you might be have standing in the cursed spot that I was in, but uh, it just. It just happens too often, but uh, I I don't know what you what the sentiment there was, Pete, or uh, if you were able to tell, like I was just watching on television, that um, you know there was the pass interference no call. Did you see the no call pass interference? Was that did they make a big deal about that in the press box? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, are you talking about the one on uh, Tyson Morris. Yes. I mean, yeah, it was absolutely just a missed no call. I mean, and it did feel like the calls were going Texas A&M's way. Mm-hmm. Uh, for most of the game, especially uh, the Monteric Brown pass interference that was called. I mean, if you're going to be calling calling it call both ways, is what it felt like. Yeah. But uh, I mean, that's just how it goes sometimes. I mean, you can't always blame the refs, I and mean, that's just what happens. And 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 Arkansas had a chance at the end, and then once again they could come through. I mean, you can't put all the blame on the refs. No, I know, you can't. I know it's easy to do for an Arkansas fan, but. Can't it, do, be doing that. it does feel like Arkansas gets screwed more than anybody else, though. But yeah, I know it. The, yeah, especially, uh, the especially man up thing to do. Streak. The man up thing to do is not blame the referees, but they certainly didn't didn't help him at all. But when you look at everything, um, you know, Arkansas probably should have won the game when you consider. Um, 395 yards to 340 yards. Defense held them to 340 yards, 89 rushing yards. Um, probably special teams you would say would be a wash, I guess. Uh, Texas A&M did win on third downs, but Arkansas won the turnover battle also. Yeah. Um, a lot of things went in Arkansas's favor in this one. Got to the quarterback more with four sacks. A lot of things like that were in Arkansas's favor. But um, – the penalties, six for 55 for Texas A&M and eight for 48 yards against Arkansas. And yep. um, probably shouldn't have been that way. Probably should have been in Arkansas's favor. So, um, No, yeah. I agree. But what really, really stood out to me today is, man, what a, what a gutsy performance by Ben Hicks. Yeah. I know after this, uh, Starkle's going to be the guy. Yeah. Or said it, and I think Starkle should be the guy. There's no doubt about that. But, I mean, that's why he came to Arkansas, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he came to Arkansas for moments like like he had today, and I mean he he got up there and he performed as well as he possibly could. I think he I think that's the best game you're ever going to see Ben Hex play. Yeah, well, I mean he definitely he definitely showed better in that game than he has in in other games this season. Um, but I think you're right. I think Starkle does give you the best chance to win when you consider his ability to to drive the ball, especially when he's on. But if there are times where he's off, like I mean in the San Jose State game. It might not have been the worst call to bring him out of the game because he was off. At the same time, he threw for 350-something yards and uh, did drop some dimes. But, um, yeah, maybe a change at quarterback would have would have shown. But that's what I was saying earlier on the show, Pete. It was just like – it just shows you how much emotion and mental attitude matter in college football. You can't just show uh-huh. up. And another example is Missouri. Missouri has won three games in a row in blowout fashion. I think they're off this week. But they won three in a row in blowout fashion. And it all started, their season started with a 37-31 loss to a Mountain Uh West team in Wyoming. You know, um, you think back about like Michigan losing to Appalachian State. And then they go on to win nine games that season. You know, stuff, college football is an emotional game. It's not just about, it's not just about the Jimmys and the Joes. I mean, that, that obviously matters. But if you don't come strap it on, ready to play, as Houston Nutt used to say, it's a two chin strap league. If you don't come on with that mental attitude, then you, anybody can beat you. Literally, anybody can beat you. There's so much more to it than just the X's and O's and Jimmy's and Joe's. Yeah, what what I'm left wondering with is, um, like you said, it is an emotional game. So is this just another Texas A&M year where mm-hmm. Arkansas plays them close and then falls the know, rest of the way? Yeah, falls the rest of the way, or is, is this really a turning point? And, it, and the difference is Chad Morris. You know, mm-hmm. in the years past, it's been Brett Bielema. So how is Morris gonna? Is he going to rally the troops and get them going? I, may, I think the bye week actually helps a lot mm-hmm. uh, just to get everyone, you know, back to 
back to full speed, especially with Trey Docks. I mean, maybe you already mentioned those guys, but mm-hmm. you know, I think the bye week comes at a good time, and as Morris can have his team ready in two weeks to take on Kentucky. Part of me thinks that this bye week is going to be really good. I mean, obviously on the outset it looks like that, but another part of me it looks like they need to get a, <laughs> they need another game just to get right back out there. But they do have some guys that are bumps and bruises and things like that. I mean, I think about now. Let's talk about um, Trey Knox, Traylon Burks, those guys. You know, you'll get Knox back. He's just been dealing with that hip injury, but. I'm going to say this, and people may disagree with me. I don't know. But Traylon Burks is the most gifted football player to come out of the Arkansas, to come out of the state of Arkansas in 14 years since Darren McFadden. What do you think? And that's that's a mouthful because there's been some talented. I mean, one of them on the field right now, C.J. O'Grady, who mm-hmm. – here's another mouthful. C.J. O'Grady is the most physically gifted tight end – Arkansas maybe has ever had. What do you think? No, I agree. I think he's definitely more physically gifted than Hunter Henry was, DJ Williams. Um, It's just a matter of – it's always been a matter of him getting his head on straight. Mm -hmm. He was really emotional after the game. Uh, You know, that ball bounced off the shoulder pads on the fourth and five. Yeah. Um, That was a tough one. I mean, when it's going through a defender's hands and probably was deflected a little bit, any movement like that, it makes it a, a much tougher catch. Yeah, so walking off the field, you know, I was right there. Um, he was really messed up about it, and Barry Lane was just in his ear the whole time, you know, saying encouraging words like, you know, it's not your fault. It's really, like you said, it's really tough, but, you know, yeah. he, he put a lot of pressure on himself. Uh, but what was impressive about CJ was he came back out in the post-game interviews and was very, really composed, mm-hmm. um, had his head on straight. Like, I feel like he just it's, – it's different this year with him. Yeah. But going back to Traylon Burks, you're absolutely right, and it's because he's a, he's a playmaker, and he, and – if this is what he's doing as a freshman, I can't wait to see what he does do does in a couple of years. Yeah, and because, you still I see mean, you still see the mistakes. I mean, he had an offsides penalty. He lined up um, in an illegal formation, came back and made up for it. That was a fifty yard catch that was wiped right. out, but he came back and made a thirty one yard catch. But things like that are things that will get you know straightened up. And also had that thirty two yard punt return. Guy just glide. I heard somebody somebody on my board said on our board, sorry, <laughs> said that. Uh, that he was slow, that he looked slow. And I'm just like, that dude just glides. What are you talking about, yeah. man? I mean, well, that's, he's just, a, that's he's a just wild smooth. Comment. Yeah. And the thing about it is a little unconventional the way he moves. Like, I guess that's what you're saying. And, and even the way he plays, like the way he catches punts, mm-hmm. where he just goes up and gets it and doesn't like let it come to his body. Yeah. I think that's a little unconventional, but it works. It's super that's, unconventional. That's what, but that's I, what I, makes I, players special, though. It, it, yeah. it looks different when they're doing it. That's what I was telling Danny. I was like, I think he just sees things differently than everybody else. I think he's That's just, a good way of putting it. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes sometimes people that are that athletically gifted um, just see things differently. And I agree. I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody catch a punt consistently like that, but he, he does it. So, um, But Burks is, is obviously going to be a special talent. Him with Trey Knox, both of those guys together. I mean, you really have some weapons. The offensive line block, that's a good defensive line. So this offensive line that was just crumbling against San Jose State figured it out and protected. I mean, so if you can continue to have some positive play from the offensive line, you have weapons, you know. Uh, you get Nick Starkle back, but you have Burks, Knox, Michael Woods. You get Devion Warren back, C.J. O'Grady. I mean, you have some playmakers. Now, they lack some speed on defense, but the defense played a heck of a game. I mean – you don't limit ten. What did they ended up with total yardage, Pete? Uh, Three hundred and forty uh, right yards. Three hundred forty so, uh, yards. They still give it. Yeah, usually, it's, you don't it's, give up thirty-one points if you only give up three hundred and forty yards. But um, that's the and only one hundred thirty-eight yards of rushing. What was it? No, is it just eighty-nine yards rushing? That's right. Yeah. Eighty-nine yards rushing. Yeah, eighty-nine Thank yards you. rushing. On, on thirty-three attempts, which is pretty impressive. Oh yeah, that's that's you take that every day. You take that every day. I mean, that was the game plan going in. It, it, it felt like. Um, Bond still got some things done with his legs, which he really hasn't done all year, and that's mm-hmm. been a concern for Arkansas playing against a, a running quarterback for some reason. Uh, in whatever how many years it's been since dual threat quarterbacks have been a thing, they still haven't figured that one out. Yeah, I, that'll, that'll no, I'll never get that. And then, and then what was really disappointing was uh, the Kellamon dash. I think it was in the third or fourth quarter, and Scuda had him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, about five yards off of the sticks, and he couldn't make the tackle. It's just those little things. They just kept on adding up and adding up. Mm-hmm. Starkle's interception. I mean, I don't know what that was all about. And then 
Yeah. Well, what I happened mean, on the interception, here's what happened on the interception, and the announcers never talked about it, but he was going to Rakeem Boyd. It was a, yeah, he got tackled yeah, in the end zone. He got tackled as the ball was in the air, um, and so there was no receiver there. That's what happened on that. Now, still, it was – Kind of a questionable play call just because there was so much traffic right in the middle. I mean, they're looking for a running play up the gut, and you're going to throw a pass behind the line of scrimmage up the gut. It's kind of a weird play call. But, again, don't expect perfection, but um, that one just kind of blew up in their face. And then this is what NFL coaches teach their quarterback. When you throw an interception, just get away from the play. I know. Get away from the play. Um, because for that very reason, because quarterbacks get injured on it, trying to make tackles and stuff. So, all right, Pete, you got anything else? That guy man? was that guy was a three hundred four pounder. That yeah. Starkle took down, and he lowered his shoulder like he was trying to I know. make a play like a safety. Starkle man. could have got so. a helmet to helmet on that play. <laughs> I mean, oh, absolutely! I, I say mean, Arkansas yeah, I didn't was, get away with anything, but it would, more than anything, yeah, it wouldn't have surprised me to see the rest throw a flag on Starkle. Um, oh. So Arkansas going to beat Kentucky, Pete? I'm sorry, I think I lost the train. Arkansas going to beat Kentucky. Oh, is okay, Arkansas going to beat Kentucky? Yes. Oh, man, I think coming off the bye week. Answer the question. Uh, it's just, this A&M game is <laughs> so confusing. You never know what to think. Yeah. I'll say yes. All right, I'll let you leave with that one. Pete Royer calling it right now. Appreciate you, Pete. <laughs> Don't say that. All right, take it easy, Trey. Right. Bye, Pete. All right, that's Pete Royer, our man down in Arlington. Calling it right there, Arkansas is going to beat Kentucky. Now, I don't know if that's 100% going to happen. I think that's their best opportunity. That's the SEC game I picked them to win in the preseason. So, I think that they have an opportunity to go to Lexington and win. They've already had a little bit of experience on the road. This is a quasi type of road game, split crowd. So, you've got a little bit of learning under your belt, and you got to learn from some losses before you can go and take a victory on the road. And Kentucky is an opportunity if this team shows up. If this team shows up with the right mental mindset. We know that they have it in them. We know that they have have it in them now, and that's important. Um, we didn't know for sure before. But if anything we can take out of this game is this team has – they've got a little bit of heart in there. And that's something that I said after that last game that – you know, we talk about gut check and all these cliches and stuff, but nothing, you know, you got to have heart. You got to have some heart, and they show that they have some. And if they play with heart, then they have enough to beat a team as good as Texas A&M. Just couldn't get it done at the end. Could have gone either way, but unfortunately for Arkansas, for the eighth year in a row, it has not gone in their favor. And in the last six years now, this game has been decided by seven or fewer, except for that one game that I mentioned where Arkansas was in it until they couldn't punch it in from the one-yard line in that one. So, all right, everybody, let's get to a couple of questions before I wrap it up because we've got a lot of them on here. Bobby Swain says, seems like that's how it goes every time for the Hogs. Absolutely does. I mean, that's 100% right. I, we were talking with some of my friends, and we were talking back like when Arkansas went 3-0 and against A&M and, uh, in this Southwest Classic before they joined the SEC. You just felt like they just had their number, just going to own them every game, and, and it just has not been that since they joined the SEC. But, you know, before all this, Arkansas was 41-24-3 and and against Texas A&M all time before this last eight-game streak. Sean Baby Bybee says, man, so close to getting over the hump. Hogs played well today. Was it pass interference on the goal line interception? On the goal line interception? No, he was behind the line of scrimmage, so I don't believe so. I believe he was behind the line of scrimmage. It shouldn't be Starkle Hicks is better, says Andy Meenan. At least you got a, a discussion there. Um, but I, I do think that uh, Starkle's the better quarterback between the two, though. You don't want to take anything away from Hicks after the way he played today. Tim Lawson says, yes, pass interference on the goal line, interception. Somebody, maybe a rules expert can clarify on, on that, but he's behind the line of scrimmage. I don't think it was. Proud of the players. Had to play hard, says Thomas Nunnally. Had to play against the refs. Made some mistakes. Got to clean up both sides of the ball still. However, played like they should, coached like they should. Don't expect perfection. I mean, obviously you strive for perfection in every game, but you just can't expect them to be perfect. The difference is the offense is better, says Bobby Swain. Definitely. Special teams is better, too. Don't forget about special teams. I mean, they've got a weapon at punt returner. How about Connor Limpert booming kicks one after another into the end zone? One after another. Arkansas didn't have that last year, and he's been pretty consistent. Adrian Jones says Hunter Henry, question mark. Yeah, I mean, 
it's an argument, I think, over who's more, you know, Hunter throughout his career definitely had his head on straighter than CJ, but CJ has, uh, has really come into his own. Uh, I mean, DJ Williams, Hunter Henry, I'm just talking about like the physical natural gifts that they both possess. And I mean, I'm not cutting down Hudson Henry by any stretch because Hunter, Hudson, or, uh, excuse me, Hunter, uh, Hunter is a fantastic tight end, obviously, but uh, CJ has a lot of physical ability. Bobby Dale says this team isn't better than last year. I mean, which team? The team that showed up for San Jose State or the team that showed up just now? Does Boyd come back for his senior year with Starkle? I think that's iffy. I mean, if he goes for over 1,000 yards, I could see him moving on as a fourth-year junior. It's They could use him coming back, though. There's no question about that. They really like Traylon Smith, the other running back. Uh, so that could be a nice duo next year. Patrick Champion says, really proud of the fight they showed today. Tommy Bennett said, Burks may very well be one of several very talented players. Vast improvement. They will get it together. Rodney Graves says, Hunter was great, but I don't believe he was as physical as O'Grady. Hunter was physical. I just don't – Or yeah, the first thing that stuck out to me about Hunter Henry when I went and watched him in high school because I thought he'd be like a spread, you know, tight end that, you know, gets a bunch of balls. But he, he will drag people. Hunter is very physical. Just don't forget that. Stephen Murphy says, time for a win. Yes, it is. Jess Bond says, we had a shot, showed we can play. That's the most important thing you can take out of this game. Obviously, the thing that matters above anything is winning. Nobody's going to put an asterisk above, you know, Chad Morris's record and say, yeah, but they played really hard in this Texas A&M game. The wins are what matters. But it does show you as a Razorback fan that maybe things are headed in a better direction. Um, you know, they pull out that San Jose State game, then I think people are really feeling good about this team. But what we also know is that if they don't show up, then it can be a disaster. So, Stephen Murphy says he saw improvement. Yeah, people asking about Trey Knox. It, it's a hip injury. He got hit twice in the hip against Ole Miss, and it's been bothering him ever since. Matt Worley says Texas offensive line was holding all day, Texas a and especially when we were getting ready to sack a quarterback. There were some miss – holding and that's kind of what I'm talking about they can't buy a holding penalty it seems like it's been like that uh, all season long they can't they can't seem to get a holding call against the other team Graham Cox says Trey my bald-headed brother I know everyone says the excuse of a young team is not valid anymore I get that they didn't show up in that San Jose State game but this is a young team that got coached up and played well they just definitely responded as I was saying I mean there are two options for this game they were either going to let go of the rope and lose like 55-10 or it was going to be a close game one way or the other, whether they win or, or lose a close game. There was no in-between. No, no chance this was going to be like a 14-point loss. It was either going to be a blowout loss or a, a close win or loss. Jim Taylor says, hey, Trey, Jim in Fresno, California, my neighbor, the A&M, came over at half, A&M fan came over at halftime and said we were supposed to beat LSU and Mississippi State, not A&M. We put a scare in them. I was proud of the way the defense played today. Thanks once again for what you do, Danny and the gang are doing at Hog Sports. Appreciate you, Jim. Bobby Dale says, did you see improvement last year when we almost – Beat A and M. This is exactly what happened last year, and we went up two and ten. I don't, I don't know if it's the same though, Bobby Dale. I mean, last year, last year I felt more like this team was just kind of pieced together. I guess. I mean, I, I felt like this was a, lo- a little, di- a little bit different. I mean, I think you did too, Bobby. Don't you? Don't you feel like it was a little bit different than last year? Matt A. Worley says, and yes, Nick should still be the starter, no question. Stephen Murphy says they were ready to play today. Bobby Swain says, I thought they should have attacked the edge with Boyd when Starkle threw the pick. Silly play calling. I can't I can't hate on the play calling too much. Now, the one thing I would say is Boyd only had 18 rushes and he had two catches. And I said before the game I'd like to see 25 to 30. I think they even said that on TV, that it would be 25 30. Uh, that, that, that's how many Boyd want. And he did take a, a shot and maybe that – you know, hurt him. But, you know, I saw in practice all week they're doing a lot of toss sweeps, um, you know, trying to get the ball out on the edge. They did do that a lot more early, it's, it feels like. Announcer said our defense is the second youngest in college football. Yes, they're, they're, there's no question they're young. People are tired of hearing the young excuse, but it, it doesn't change the fact that it's absolutely true that there are 53 freshmen, redshirt freshmen, second youngest defense in college football. I mean – I've said before, you've got a true freshman at right end. You've got a true freshman, 275-pound starting right guard. Your best receiving options are freshmen, uh, aside from O'Grady. 
And aside from that, you know, you got your quarterbacks are, are, are new to the program. Um, so you are a young team. There's no question that you're a young team. People are tired of hearing that, but it doesn't change the fact that it's, it's true. Shemitra Jackson says, so proud of them. David McDaniel says they have home field advantage every year, move the game back to campus. I agree with that, David McDaniel. The attendance has gone down every single year over the last seven years. It's gone down every single year. Now, this is an 11 o'clock game. I think they've played other other 11 o'clock games in this series, though. Cedric Hurd says defense did well overall, three or four instances on third down near the goal line. Chavis did. Didn't design no pressure and gave Mons time not forcing the ball out quicker. He is not the answer. Elvis Scott said, why are our players undisciplined late in games? I don't know what, what was undisciplined. Marjorie Head Garrick says, way back in the day when I was at Fayetteville, we used to regularly beat them darn Aggies. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it was – what was it? What did I say it was? 41-24-3 and three in the series before they entered the SEC. Chris Craven says, if Boyd was behind the line of scrimmage, it's not a P.I., Thank you, Chris. Lance Walker says, Irks for president. Burks for president, maybe. Steve Welton says, just joining you, would you agree Arkansas looked better today? I think they did. A couple of people said it's the same old stuff as last year. I don't, I don't think it is. I think this is a little bit different now. Don't get me wrong. I still am discouraged by the way they played against San Jose State. That is discouraging for me. And you'd rather be on the other side of a learning moment. But hopefully you would hope that they take that you know, in another direction here. So, Starkle was spot on. Great job. Even though the interception, Hicks did a good job backing him up. Let's see if we got any more questions. Play calling had no continued. I didn't think the play calling was that big of an issue. He doesn't set plays up. Hmm. I don't know, Chris. I think I, I, I think the play, I don't expect perfection again. I think the play calling was okay. I think the play calling was okay. They could have gotten a couple of calls here and there, a couple of things gone in a different direction, you know, things like that. I want to remind everybody there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. Hog Sports Live, you can watch on Facebook Live, always streaming live there, hence the name Hog Sports Live. Always upload to YouTube immediately after. Go ahead and throw us a like or a thumbs up if you like the content that we have at hogsports.com. If you haven't done so already, uh, throw us that thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the channel. Hit the notifications bell on YouTube, depending on where you're watching, um, so you're notified anytime that we upload a new video. Also available on Apple Podcasts, number one rated Razorback show on Apple Podcasts. Take a moment now to go ahead and throw us a five-star rating and say something nice. Throw us a review in there if you don't mind. Always on Spotify and Stitcher as well. So plenty of ways to watch and listen. Hogsports.com is just $1 right now for your first month. If you like the content, then you can continue on at regular price after that. Or you can sign up for an annual subscription, take 30% off your first year, and also get a seven-day free trial with that. So I want to thank you all, you all, for joining me. This show wouldn't be what it is without you guys. I'm glad for the support of that. Thank you for all of your questions. Thank you to Pete Roulier for joining us. And this has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we will catch you next time. 